So, you have your new Bridgecom buddy FRS radio, now what? There's actually more to it than would appear. You can program your buddy using a basic programming cable and software to personalize your experience to meet your communication needs. Hi, my name is Eric with Bridgecom and today I'll be showing you how easy it is to program and customize your buddy, even if you aren't the technical type. Let's dive in. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take our Bridgecom buddy and uh, plug it into the computer and uh, get going with uh, that programming software. So first off, what you'll need is uh, obviously a Windows 10 based computer. Um, you could use Windows 10 or Windows 11 works with it too. Um, now, one note with Windows 11, you do need to download the prolific driver for the cable as it won't work out of the box otherwise. Um, but if you need to know how to do that, uh, you can go ahead and give it a Google search or uh, ask our support team. So we have our programming cable. This comes with the software as part of your programming kit. So I already have the software installed on my computer. Um, and now let's plug the cable in. So we'll plug the cable into the computer first, and then we'll go ahead and plug it into the radio next. Um, now, just to make sure, uh, since we don't really get an indicator when it turns on, other than an audio, what channel we're on, let's turn the radio on first. Okay, it's on. Now, I know um, if you're an amateur radio operator out there, you're going to be like, what? No, make sure the radio's off before you pr plug in the cable. I know. Um, we do have an antenna attached, and uh, we're going to make sure we stay clear of the push to talk button. So, as long as you don't key that up, you should be fine. So, we'll get that plugged in there. So, now our cable is attached to the radio, and we are ready to program it. So, let's go over here to the computer. Let's open up that uh, programming software. As you can see, I have it on my desktop. It's called Bridgecom F10. Uh, so, let's double click that to open it and I'll full screen this for you. Okay, so right out of the gate we have, uh, you can see our channel list as well as some options at the top. It's pretty straightforward, not a lot to it. Um, as you can see, the 16 channels down on the side are the 16 channels you get with this radio. Um, and you may notice the transmit and the receive frequencies are grayed out as well as the uh, transmit power. So uh, those are not user editable. You can't change those, those are locked out for you. But we can change the other stuff. So uh, let's start up here at the top. Um, first, you're gonna have uh, model information. It's gonna tell you frequency range. Um, since this is an FRS radio, uh, there's only one option. It's gonna be between the FRS uh, frequency range. Right down here below that, you're going to see what's uh, titled uh, R slash W password and change password. This is a read write password. Now, I strongly recommend you do not fill out a password here because there is not a way of recovering this if you say forget it. So, if you are going to use the password feature, make sure to either write it down or make it something you won't forget because you can't recover it. There's not a reset button for the radio outside of the software. Uh, next up, we have the squelch squelch level. So by default, that is set to five, um, but you have zero, which is going to be off, all the way through nine, which is going to be your most strict squelch level. Um, and if you're not sure what squelch is, it's basically um, how much background noise does the radio try and filter out. So on analog radio, um, which is what FRS is, um, you're going to hear a lot of static if you have no squelch. And uh, uh, so setting that higher allows you to um, get cleaner audio and it will stay silent until the audio is louder than that threshold you select. Um, the, only, uh, the only point to note here is if you um, are often using these at the limits of their range, the, the further away you get, the weaker the signal gets, so you may need to lower that squelch if uh, you're experiencing um, the audio cutting in and out um, at the limits of that range of it. Next up, we have that timeout timer. Uh, by default, it's set to 180 seconds. 
Uh, these are in seconds, uh, so um, you can click on this. You have off all the way up to 300 seconds. So what this does is when you're holding down that push to talk, uh, if you uh, just continually holding it down and talking, or say you give this to a friend and they just won't stop talking, and the radio is gonna kick them off of transmitting and tying up that channel after whatever you have set here. So pretty straightforward, um, not a lot to it. Um, next up, we have the Vox level. So by default, that's turned off, but this is a feature, especially if you're using those earpieces, that, and you want to go ahead and um, have, uh, basically, when you start talking, it will key up for you. You don't have to push that push to talk button. That's what Vox is for. Um, you have different threshold levels, so if you're someone who likes to talk loud or are in a loud environment and don't want the radio automatically keying up, you can set it to a higher threshold and it will go ahead and not key up until it reaches that threshold. Um, likewise, your Vox delay time down below, that's going to be um, how much of a delay in seconds it's going to be before the radio uh, starts transmitting when it hears that uh, audio. That's um, so. Uh, next, let's move over to the last column here or section. Uh, we have the scan mode. Um, there's two options there. You have carrier or time. So carrier is going to cycle through all the channels you have um, down here that say scan add yes. All of those channels is going to run through those as uh, quickly as possible. And um, time is going to basically add like six or so seconds to that and uh, it'll just stay on that channel for that period of time and then it moves on. So um, the which one should I use here is going to be if say you want to just scan all the channels that are on this radio I'd probably set it to carrier as it's going to do that much quicker and you have less chance of missing something now if you just want to monitor say two three or maybe even four channels um, and you want to make sure it monitors that channel as long as uh, or for an extended period of time click on that time option because that will go ahead and uh, increase the time it waits on that channel for you. Uh, last two options here, you have the battery save. Um, and what that does is um, there's a, a microcontroller in this uh, a radio um, that's going to handle all the operations. Uh, it just it goes ahead and optimizes it and makes it more power efficient. So um, it, it just uses less power on the radio. Um, so that's an option if you definitely are going to be away from the charger for long periods of time and you don't want to worry about running out of power. Uh, down below we have that beep tone. Um, that's just going to be when you're clicking buttons, um, whether or not it beeps. So um, pretty straightforward. All right, down here with the channels, um, you have the uh, first off you have the channel number in the first column. And then we have the receive frequency. Um, as you can see, these are locked out, like I said earlier. Um, uh, and then you're going to have the decode channel, not, not channel, uh, PL tone. You're going to have a deco decode PL tone. So whenever you're receiving, this is the PL tone that that's set up for. You also have transmit frequency, also locked out, like I said earlier. Um, so uh, moving on, we have the encode um, PL tone. Now, you may be asking, what is a PL tone? Well, a PL tone, um, or privacy tone, uh, as it was referred to back in the day, um, these are those CTCSS and DCS codes, it has both in there for you, that are going to allow you to have um, some flexibility when you're communicating with your um, group, whether it's a family or you're out with friends and you don't want to be interrupted, um, this is very useful for that feature. So from my understanding, a PL tone is going to not necessarily prevent others from listening in, as you can do that on just carrier um, mode anyway, but what it, well, what it will do is um, it's going to prevent them from transmitting into your conversation unless they have your PL tone. 
So it kind of gives you that privacy where you can talk to your friends and, um, or family and uh, not have to worry about some random stranger who also has an FRS radio um, uh, getting into your conversation and start talking to your friends or family. Especially useful if, say, you have little kids and you want to keep tabs on them at the playground and you don't want other people talking to them. So kind of useful there. Um, and those are customizable, so you can pick whatever you want. We have it set up here, as you can see, by default to tone 67. Uh, that's a CTCSS tone. And uh, that is going to be most compatible with the default configuration for a lot of those Motorola and Midland radios out there. All right, so over here, um, like I said, the transmit power is also locked out. Uh, so we can move on. Uh, the scan add, that is the list where um, if it says yes, it's going to scan that channel when you go into uh, the scan mode. So you can click on this option here, set that to no, um, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, as well as the busy lock. You can turn busy lock on or off, so when you are transmitting and um, your friend goes to transmit, it will actually notify them that, hey, someone's already transmitting on this. Uh, you may not want to step over their toes and uh, go ahead and basically beep at you. Uh, Compander, here's a really interesting feature that, um, for me, I don't know what kind of a use case this would be for, but what it's going to do is when you transmit, if you turn this on, when you transmit, it's going to compact that audio and uh, um, compress it, uh, essentially, send it out, and then when the um, receiving radio gets it, that radio is going to um, expand it or decompress it. Um, so it allows that same signal to go over um, a 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth. Uh, that's more useful for, say, amateur radio. These FRS radios, um, not as uh, pertainable there, so you can do with what you want on that feature. Now, I will note that the audio quality does suffer when you turn this on, so it's going to sound more like you're talking through a tin can if uh, you do turn that on. Lastly, we have a special code. So this is a rather interesting feature. Um, I. Uh, uh, talked with one of my engineers about this, and uh, essentially what he said is this feature um, basically couples two uh, DCS tones together and essentially doubles them up. So it's not encryption, but it does have uh, multiple uh, PL tones stacked on top of each other to kind of give you that extra um, privacy line aspect of it. So that's, that's pretty much all we have there. Um, up at the top, you have the options for uh, your communication port, um, read and write from radio. Uh, you also have the option to, if you say, have a, uh, a specific set of PL tones and scan list options that you really like and you want to save that uh, so that you can, if you get new radios or um, you just, you just want to save this uh, for later reference, you can go up here to the file menu and hit save and, and save that. You can also open ones that you have saved in the past. So um, past that, uh, the read from radio is uh, pretty straightforward. That's going to read from the radio. You do get this flashing green light when it is reading from the radio. So that's a pretty cool feature there. And then also there's a write to radio function, which works the same way. Um, that just writes to the radio. So that is uh, the programming software in a nutshell. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. We'll be happy to answer those. And there you have it. Programming can be an off-putting word sometimes. But as this video demonstrated, there's nothing to be afraid of. With just a little tooling around, you can get even more enjoyment out of your FRS radio experience, something we at BridgeCom Systems want to encourage whenever possible. Thanks again for watching. My name is Eric with BridgeCom, and we'll see you next time, 7-3.